Hello, faculty. This is uh, James Gentry. Well, Jim. Over here at CE, the Center for Excellence in Education. You probably have been hearing a lot about artificial intelligence and some of the challenges it now poses to us as instructors with our students. Um, Mr. January has a link uh, below that you can watch a video and he directly talks about some of these like Quillbot and ChatGPT uh, making us aware of them and there's some positives that this new technology brings to our students but there are some integrity and ethics that we need to consider um, uh, with these new tools so let's jump into it first I want to show you something um, about ChatGPT so if you look right here this is an example where I have written and asked it to write an essay concerning the science of teaching reading. This is my field. And do this with APA 7th um, edition. And it did a pretty good job. It missed some of the, I would have probably had a few others uh, in there. Um, and even the, um, the 2000 uh, report, for, uh, the National Reading Panel report, not in there. But still, it did, a, it did pretty well. And it has... Um, some really good citations it's all in text and then it has a reference list now of course it doesn't format it exactly like APA 7th edition but um, unfortunately a student could just copy and paste that and if they wanted to fool us right so this is the scary side of this what we're looking at here um, um, being used maybe unethically uh, and causing us uh, problems. So, what can we do about this? <laughs> what are some things that we can turn around? Well, following good re research-based teaching practices that have been around for a long time about project-based learning or problem-based learning, uh, authentic assessments or authentic learning experiences, those are all things that have been here forever. And, uh, and some of the, uh, the ethical things take advantage when we instructors are not following research-based practices. When we, do, when we do not do that, uh, these cheats and plagiarism and um, mimics um, can come in and really uh, play havoc with what we're doing. I want to show you a list uh, of some things uh, uh, well, actually, references right here. So here are some references that are based on good teaching practices. They're research-based, all the way from uh, Darling Hammond and uh, her her uh, discussion about a blueprint for creating schools that work, which is about authentic assessment, and that was in 1997. And then Stiggins uh, here at the bottom, assessment for learning and action plan for school improvement, and it goes on and on. Uh, there these references about how we can um, um, do the right thing and uh, design our classes to follow these best practices right that's what it's all about so with that said I want to list uh, about six things that you can do that uh, will help you um, manage these new challenges that we face these six things so the first thing and one of the things that have been around for a long time is having class um, experiences like outside the class or field experiences or field trips so if, if you will and if you're an online teacher these could be VR field trips and a student would have to take for example something you're teaching them in the class something they're reading about it could be a concept it could be research um, whatever it is and then they're observing things in this VR world or authentically in the real world and um, artificial intelligence has trouble mimicking that so it's real world and that's one way to do it another way is uh, classroom based research so having your students research things and giving reports as they go through this um, it could be a project of some sort, um, a deliverable where they have to create something, a model, uh, and bring it to class 
and talk about it. Or it could be, if it's um, online, it could be virtual. Um, and uh, it can be in phases, of course. And you could have check-ins as you go along. And that's harder to uh, mimic or uh, substitute. And AI doesn't do that well because it's authentic. It's creative. It's that sort of thing. And then the third thing is show and tell. Or, um, for example, with writing, having drafts as we go through the writing process, all the way, uh, you know, from the revision and editing all the way to publication, and um, giving feedback to students as they're going through the process. As a matter of fact, here at our writing center, and if you're if you're in a writing intensive class, that's exactly what you're doing because it's a it's a best best practice, and um, students providing reports on that. It could be on video orally about this is where I am in my paper. This is where I think I'm going to be. I'm using this feedback to do this and this and this. Uh, or in class, just discussing with peers or small groups or with you if it's face to face. The uh, fourth idea is having short quizzes, formative assessments, whether they be in class or through the LMS. They could be short timed little quizzes where you're having students comment on things they've read, experienced, or things that have been discussed in the class. Um, that's hard uh, for AI to mimic because you're bringing up real events, real um, observations maybe within the class itself or from the reading uh, that's very specific uh, that AI may not have access to, especially if it's behind a, a paywall, a paywall. So like a textbook or something like that um, uh, or material behind paywalls uh, that AI does not have access to. Uh, then uh, you're able to uh, share that. So that, that's, uh, that's important uh, there. And uh, sh uh, sh let me see. Oh, and then the fifth one is uh, proctoring. So having our students um, maybe go to the testing center and proctor. Back in the old days, we had blue books. Uh, I'm not saying bring those back, but maybe have their computers, all that bring to class now that we're all connected to the web and uh, students be able to write, maybe even help each other, talk about their writings, their ideas with you. It's a little bit more time consuming, but you can do that. Um, you can also have online proctoring, of course. It's a little bit more complicated, but that is another way to uh, minimize some of the ethic concerns, ethical concerns and challenges with AI. And then the final and sixth thing is making a policy. Uh, whether the university does that or you do that as a professor, uh, you make a policy and up, be upfront about AI. Maybe talk about how they can use it to help them. Maybe you yourself dive in there, use it, demonstrate that in class, but also talk about some of the things you're concerned about. And uh, they know these guys, the, your students know you're in the know, and, uh, and, and that will help maybe uh, rethinking some of those things easy outs when it comes to an assignment uh, with um, artificial intelligence. So those are just six ideas. Please watch Scott's video uh, showing these tools and uh, we'll make it through as always and um, we'll follow these best practices and that will make a difference. Thanks again for watching this brief tutorial brought to you by the Center for Educational Excellence. If you like these types of videos, please subscribe. Also, reach out to us via the information on the screen if you have any further questions. Thanks a lot and have a great day.